Hey y'all, it's almost time for a list week, so this will probably be my last album review before we get into all the year-end goodness. Okay, so I listened to Hicks Tape 2 and it was not good. And for once, I don't sound like a lunatic because it's pretty much the same conclusion everyone has drawn from this project. Last year, Hardy made a pretty well-received album by the casual country crowd. Is it a masterpiece like some die-hard people make it out to be? N no a rock is good and had some really exceptional tracks, but for the most part, it's just bro country given a different form, and bro country is still bro country. It's like that phrase, 100% of zero is still zero, but not to that extent because I still find this project pretty good. And that's the thing that has made it sting the most for a lot of the die-hard Hardy fans. For all the people that held Hardy up as a god-tier artist and have him deliver such a mediocre release, it's gonna hurt a lot more compared to me who's never been as impressed and acknowledge it just flat out stinks. I didn't really like the first Hicks tape, so I kinda knew going in I wasn't gonna like this one. This one also took a different approach with a far larger ensemble and Hardy not influencing some of the songs. Also, why is there little women? Are you telling me Hardy and his team couldn't get more women on this thing? The album reeks from the fact it's just dominated by a bunch of dudes. Although maybe that's the reason no women except for Ashlyn Craft and Lainey Wilson came along for the project. I think what makes this compilation super ironic and really all the funnier is that the worst songs are the ones with Hardy. Hardy's had a complete downward trajectory this year, releasing a mediocre cover track, doing this pathetic collab with Brantley Gilbert, and now with Dirks and the soulless beers on me. It's like he's experienced nothing but burnout and cannot make a single song with an iota of the high the rock had. Hometown Boys is a generic bro country song with no semblance of literal thought put into it. To Hank is a generic bro country song with no semblance of literal thought put into it. Drink Up and One of Y'all is a generic bro country song with no sem- You get the idea. They're all the same songs and like any bro country song from the past decade. They're all formulaic, follow the same tropes and musical styles to a point where the similarities are incredibly obvious. Not only that, but at least the songs from Zen had actual energy and personality. None of the people featured on these tracks actually sound like they want to be here. Hardy especially, the man can put passion into a song, but here he just sounds tired of it all. Which is really weird for songs intended for partying. The best songs on the project thankfully had no influence from Hardy, to a point where Hardy literally stole a song from Larry Fleet's debut album. I'm not joking. This is the only song that appears on another project. Hardy really had no choice but to steal the only really good song on this album, because the rest of it is just painstakingly forgettable. Which if anything makes this whole project look dirtier. But In Love With My Problems is a song I really like. Larry Fleet and Party sound great together and I enjoy their dynamic, along with such a novel concept for a breakup song that livens up the formula. Also this Larry Fleet record is really good and go listen to it since this album isn't. There were a couple moments I liked, the Marty Stewart and Midland song is a bop, Red Dirt Clouds, while not totally enjoyable, I enjoyed the premise of it, even if the vocal performance was pretty lukewarm. I Smoke Weed has a pretty hilarious ending that makes the entire song worth it, but as a whole these glimmers of potential aren't enough to keep this poorly conceived compilation record from falling apart, and I know I'm more prone to praise albums that have a compelling narrative because music is the best form of emotional storytelling and all. But I like party songs too, and sometimes they can be really clever and fun and they have fun personalities to them. Hicks tape isn't that in the slightest. Its attempts to be energetic are weak, nothing really jumps out at you yelling distinct or interesting, it just yells at you how much of a dude bro I am and I'm never leaving my hometown. The sound is incredibly dated, but what can you expect when you realize who it's coming from? And Hardy clearly is not in the right lane to produce songs at this point, when looking at who was in charge. Apart from the producer, these songs were done by multiple different people, each of them crafted pretty much individually, which is a disastrous thing to do. There are great compilation records, although most of them are dedication records, but Southern Family is a compilation album with songs being done by multiple different people. It even has a song stolen from another album, but at least there the songs were crafted by the vision of Dave Cobb, and it's a concept album telling one concise story. Hicks tape is a clear example of what not to do with a compilation record of this scale, nothing of truly exceptional value, and just a product of an age that needs to die at this point. And its failure is something future compilations I believe we'll learn from. Decent 4 out of 10. Now to reflect on the good stuff.